I'm CJ Hi. Anderson, and welcome to The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their heart. Today, my guest is Chris Hanlon, and we're going to be talking about the fact that he talks to bees. So bees is a passion of mine as well. So I actually am very excited to have him on today. Thank you for coming on today, Chris. You're welcome. Um, as I said before, bees is a passion of mine. I can't really interview myself, so I'm glad you were able to come on today for me. Can you share why it is a passion of yours? It started way early. I was probably 10. And one of the first experiences I had watching bees was when we vacationed in Bandera, Texas. There was a bee tree on the way to the ranch. Yes, uh -huh. it was an old oak. Oh, my sister and I made my father stop every time, stop at the bee tree dead. And we even judged how much farther we had to go by how much farther is it to the bee tree dead. <laughs> so that was, it was a fascinating time, obviously 10 years old. Um, that was probably my first uh, experience with that type of nature that I, obviously at that time did not understand, but was totally amazed. Mm -hmm. When I got into high school, I had a friend whose father kept bees. Mm -hmm. So I was exposed then to the honey. That was my favorite. And the when honey. he cut out a piece of that comb and handed it to us, it was the best thing I'd ever tasted. And I'm like, okay, are you worried about getting stung? He told me right then and there, if you're worried about getting stung, you shouldn't be a beekeeper. Mm -hmm. I remembered that for, for, from that point on. Well, and the so, wax tastes like candy and it just, it depends on what the bees had been, you know, harvesting from. Like we have pear trees. So our first year, it almost tasted like a pear honey. It will. And peach honey, I understand is one of the best. Mm -hmm. um, now Tupelo honey, I understand is even better than that. So I have a long-term goal to plant some Tupelo trees on my yeah. property. Absolutely. The, uh, so you mentioned honey and you mentioned bees, obviously. Um, I am actually a beekeeper and I am allergic to bees. Um, I double up on everything that I'm wearing to make sure that I don't get stung. Um, our bees are pretty feisty. So I laugh at anybody who goes, aren't you worried about somebody coming in and stealing your honey? And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, mine are gangster bees. They will come after people. You get within 20 feet, not in a bee suit, you will have no less than three bees on you. Wow. Of the bee, of the bee yard, not even the beehive, but of the bee yard, they will be on you and they will not let up. Well, let me tell you another story. <laughs> the first time I was aware of the magnitude that bees, the power that bees have mm -hmm. is we were working on a construction site where it was an old garage that we had to knock down uh -oh. and the excavator was ready to go and the operator was i see something up there will you go check it out i climbed up the ladder i saw two buzzards baby buzzards i went oh it's just a couple of buzzards we moved them out of the way got down while i was on the top of that ladder though i heard something i'd never it was almost like the garage was breathing but i had no clue I gave the man the go ahead. He knocked down the wall and CJ, there was literally a tornado of bees that came out of that garage. It probably was 60 feet in the air. Good heavens. I was probably, I was within a hundred feet. I was watching I, After I saw the cloud of bees coming out, I backed up. And have you running back and hiding in the I, car. But I wasn't running because I was too, it's like the train crash. You can't take your eyes off of this. So I'm standing there witnessing this and bees were hitting me. They were bumping me. No, I didn't get stung, but they were bumping me. And I was like, okay, do I need to back up a little farther? And I backed up a little farther. That was the most incredible thing that I've ever seen. A beekeeper or a person that had newbies was on the crew and he pointed up into the tree and he says there's the queen and i said how do you know because they were balling up they were clustered around her. all clustered around the queen and it was getting bigger and bigger by the second he pointed over to another tree and he says oh there must have been two queens in this hive because there's another ball and cj if i'd have been 
beekeeping it on that day, I would have been able to increase my apiary. I don't know how full because there was just that many bees. Nice. And then, of course, we look at the honeycomb and I got stung a few times trying to get the honeycomb out. I mean, we were just scraping it right up off of the wall of the garage, took it home. And so that was a very large experience of the power of these creatures. And I was just amazed. Mm -hmm. Now, a beekeeper ended up bringing some equipment out to my property. My wife worked at a thrift store. He was a regular customer and they talked about bees. So I asked her to ask him if you can get bees out of a tree because my father who had a rent house was uh, telling me that there was bees in a tree down there. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. I found out that you can and I figured, and I got someone to help mentor me to go and retrieve these bees and that was actually my first hive of bees oh, nice. and that was so fun to experience okay you trap them out and then you 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 force them out of the tree by way of a, what they call a bee door which they can come out but they couldn't get back in we ended up having to introduce a new queen into the hive but that hive grew and it took about four weeks and I went, picked it up, took it home and watched. I would go out every day and just watch the bees. I knew not anything about growing the bees. The beekeeper that I mentioned had brought hives out because he got crosswise with a landowner that was burning the bees and it was all over. Yeah, it was all over honey. The, the landowner wanted the honey, the, and this was peach orchard. It was excellent honey. The beekeeper, I don't really know the details. They got crosswise. I ended, I ended up with about 20 boxes empty, but I, the equipment, I didn't have to build anything. And all of a sudden I was just gifted with this equipment. So I'm like, okay, how fast can I fill these boxes up with bees and put the word out and started rescuing bees? at that nice. point out of yeah, um, it can be painful there's um one of we have two main mentors that we use one of them was well, the one we got our original set of bees from um and they made it through last winter really well um we also had a second mentor who came in about the fall um he's been doing bees for over 50 years oh wow and, yeah so we're really blessed to have both of them. Um, one no kind of leans a little bit more toward commercial, one leans a little bit more toward just the love of it. And so, you know, we kind of got a good balance on that. Um, but we came out of the winter 10 strong. I mean, strong, strong. Like we could have gotten hundreds of gallons of honey. Unfortunately, um, hundreds of pounds of honey. Unfortunately, uh, somebody decided to um, do the pine beetle poison yes. the and didn't, they didn't notify any of the apiaries and the plane leaked. And the reason we know this is because our mentor lives near the airport. He lost 60, that's six zero out of 80 hives and we lost nine out of 10. We didn't know what was going on. We smelled the chemical, but we didn't really register what was going on. And literally every single week we go out there like something's going on. We would lose hive after hive after hive because the bees would go and gather the pollen and bring it back to the queen and the queen died and that kills the hive. It was a brutal, brutal spring. I mean, bad. And we ended up buying four new hives, strong, they're the gangster bees. Um, we were able to nurse a couple of them and split them as they got a little bit bigger. So we're now back up to nine um, and they're doing pretty good. Um, one of them had to requeen itself, but it's actually very fascinating to watch. As Hurricane Laura came through, they were gathering like mad puppies out there. And mm -hmm. then like the day before, they were just clustered in their hives. You didn't see a whole lot coming in or going out. And you know, you can watch them, you can tell the weather by them as well. You sure can. It's, it's interesting, um, but I love, when we get the frames and I can just scrape the comb off with the honey and eating that honeycomb is really nice. And what wow. we've done is um, I used to get four colds a year. Uh -huh. and two of those, I would completely lose my voice. I'd end up on inhalers, um, double rounds and triple rounds of antibiotics. It was bad. Ever since 
I started having at least a tablespoon of honey every single morning from our bees, which are literally in the backyard. Yes. Um, I have actually not been on antibiotics at all. So, and I only had one cold nuts because I didn't take it for like two weeks because we were out of town. So can you please share with those who aren't aware exactly the health benefits of raw honey versus the honey you find in the stores? Because <laughs> there's well, a obviously difference. You have brought up the, uh, the resistance that it will help build in your immune system and the antibacterial, antifungal, it has um, obviously vitamins and minerals that you're not going to get from today's food. Um, it's, it, I, you can actually put it on topical. I mean, I, my wife got a real bad, uh, well, I'll we'll call it a burn from a pressure washer. Mm -hmm. And we actually, the first thing I, we had honey and we put it on and, and it cleared up. It was about two weeks that, but it took, but it, it cleared right up. Yeah, and that's the first better. time that we've ever learned, you know, yes. That better we learned than the triple it. antibiotic ointment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I wanted to mention something too about the poison. In Montgomery County, they were doing the same thing, spraying for mosquitoes. And the beekeepers actually went to the county. There's a, a obviously a, a membership or a club in, in Montgomery County for beekeepers. Mm -hmm. And they gathered up and went to the city hall and said, look, you're killing our bees what can we do and Montgomery County had agreed at that point to notify beekeepers and of course I mean, they, they just let us know we can net them for like a week that's correct you could protect them mm -hmm. so um well and I also wanted to mention I don't know if, if your your listeners know but honey is one of probably the only food that will last I would guess forever yeah, they, they have they, found honey in tombs in Egypt that is still edible. And they also found pottery 7,000 years old that was coated with, with wax, with bees wax to mm -hmm. protect. And so the, there's, there's, you know, the wax is just one. Propolis is good for mm -hmm. your health as well. And the honey. Um, but I have to get back to watching the bees because cj that and, and i when i've done <laughs> rescues you never know what you're going to find when you pull off that sheetrock or pull down that wood in terms of the comb one of the biggest that i did was in an old shack that had probably been abandoned for probably 30 or 40 years mm -hmm. and uh, the bees i don't know how long they had been in there how long it takes to make this type of comb. The comb went all the way from the ceiling to the floor and it was in two sections of the studs. Wow. And then it went out of the out of the sheetrock and attached to the bathtub. And it, it was the it was the maze of of honeycomb like I'd never seen. And I don't I know how how long it took them to do that, but we got a really good colony of bees out of that and we then a, a thing on uh youtube where oh. the gentleman had done a heat scanner first so you yes. could see where the bees were yes and the bees were up the front porch of the house up over the awning and into the second floor of the house they wow. had climbed all through that and filled it in like two and three links of the openings between the studs and he pulled out a lot of bees. Yes. Now, obviously that does tear up a lot of lumber, siding, flooring, and it is not always the most economical way to retrieve the bees. But we all have heard the decline of the, about the decline of the bees due to pesticides, I was bringing as up you pesticides. mentioned, mm -hmm. and my, uh, there's a bad mite that will, that will hurt bees. It's called the Varroa mite. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that came in from Australia, CJ. I'm not sure exactly, but they got, it came into a Florida beekeeper. I do know that, that sent out packaged bees and that's how the mite got out. No. But with all of that declining, that was one of the things that touched me in terms of, well, what can I do to help save these bees? I'd also heard what, um, what would happen 
if we didn't have bees. Now in this country, looking back in history, we had bumblebees, butterflies, uh, moths. There are other pollinators out there, but the European bee, when, once it was brought over by the Spanish, um, they have almost taken over the pollination of all of our foods. And, it, and I don't know if this statistic is real, but I've heard seven years that we would last so in, as a human beings because we, yes. And now I also have heard that in China where the Mandarin oranges that the world loves, mm -hmm. they can't get them pollinated because China obviously has been one of the worst about using pesticides and they don't have many bees left mm -hmm. and they are actually getting up on ladders with brushes. Ugh and they're pollinating their own trees. Well, and people don't understand that even things like seven dust that a lot yes. of farmers use, that is poison to bees. It and is poison. They don't understand it. And it's like, I'm not asking you to stop spraying or using whatever's working for you in your field. Just give me a heads up so I can net, we can net our bees for just a little bit. Exactly. Let it settle and then we'll let them loose. And then they can all work together in trying to make things go. Um, I have, a, um, a blog called The Journey to Fruitfulness. And I titled it Serenity Synergy when it has to do anything with the bees. And yes. that's because we have fruit trees, we have gardens, and we have the bees, and they all work. They have like a synergistic effect and they work together. And that's. Not to mention bees live in trees. <laughs> you know, no, yeah, they do. Um, they do. <laughs> they live in uh, wherever they can find, uh, you know, a space to live. And I get calls and the homeowner will say, no, I don't think I want to spend the $500 to remove these bees when I can go call an exterminator for 150 bucks. Oh, and you know, that, yeah, that makes me cringe. It's like, oh no, please. And, I, and just yesterday I had to turn one down because the lady would not let us go inside the building and remove the comb. What happens if you don't? If you just kill the bees, and I just kind of want to put this out to everyone, it's there lovely. is more to consider. What you're leaving behind in that wall mm -hmm. is not so much the capped honey, as you know, that's what we were just talking about. That capped honey will last forever. Right. But the ferment or the, uh, the nectar that is not completely made into honey yet and capped will begin to ferment. Now you're attracting ants and roaches and sometimes mice, and there's all kinds of pests. You'll have a worse problem. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to put that out as well. That yeah, when you're ask any beekeeper who has a hive that's been abandoned and they didn't catch it quick enough, because we've yes. had that, you yes. end up with moths. You end up with the larvae of the moths all over. You end up with mice. You end up with ants. You end up with disgusting mess. It's gross. So if you're yes. going to do it, make sure to a make sure the beekeeper gets the queen. That's Otherwise correct. Otherwise, coming back over again, and b spend the extra money in getting it all cleared out. I know it wasn't initially your thing to invite bees into your house, but you know, a you're saving the environment. B you're saving bees, and if a beekeeper is really nice, they might even give you a jar of the honey from the. <laughs> I always <laughs> offer that. Absolutely. There you go. Yes. Uh, you know, because most beekeepers, you know, we're not in it for the money. We yeah, know it's true. not the financial aspect of it. It's the health aspect of it. I work with essential oils and herbs. And so the next natural progression for us was, you know, bees and honey and the wax and get making like balms and candles and, you know, lotions and stuff from it. And, you know, the health benefits are just astronomical, as we've already mentioned. And most beekeepers are in it for the bees themselves. It's a passion. It's it a is a passion. And that's what I discovered when I brought that first hive home. And I find myself at 10 o'clock, I'm going out, the bees aren't active at 10 o'clock, but I'm going to go out there and put my ear on the box to see they're still in there. And then the next morning I'll be out there bright and early to watch them come out and go to work. And yes, I fell in love with them. And obviously, uh, someone asked me the other day, are you a bee whisperer or something? And I said, no, 
I talk out loud and <laughs> I talk out loud to the bees. And I them. we go out there and if they're a little feisty and our smoke isn't quite as prevalent as we would like, or Trevor's trying to, you know, get it going a little bit stronger, I'll sing to him. And it there, Oh, yeah. there you go. Now I haven't tried that. My, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not the best singer, but, uh, Make but they, noise. They don't, don't yeah, they don't mind. They don't mind. Uh, in fact, you know, when they sting me, I apologize because mm -hmm. as you know, they die when a bee stings you, they die. So I mean, it's not like the, um, orange wasps that don't even have the courtesy to die. Uh, no, they don't. They and they can sting you multiple times without any remorse. Uh, mm -hmm. so that is sort of a feeling of, oh, wow, I, I'm sorry because I, you know, you stung me. I know that you thought I was trying to invade your space i'm just checking to see how things are going and that all of those conversations just seem to it seems to work both ways they're like okay they'll check me out and then uh you know i've gone out when you check a box i now i'm not allergic so i'm not worried too much about that part but i'll go out and just put a veil on and some shorts um when i first started uh no and of course if you're gonna go do a cutout that's a whole different thing because you're you're messing up, you're, you're destroying their home and they do get a little testy, but. Well, and something to consider is something we've, we've learned in working with bees. Like if my husband was starting to get sick and he went out to just go check the bees before cause we knew we were gonna be going down for a little bit. Um, and he got stung like seven times a bee had gotten, several bees had gotten into a suit. He didn't quite have it closed enough. Okay. Within 24 hours, he was better. See? People don't understand the stings actually help as well. The stings and help as well. There is actually what uh, a therapy out there. It's still what I would say in the experimental stages. Mm -hmm. However, uh, at one of the meetings at the in Montgomery County, there was a gentleman that came to visit us in a wheelchair and he had muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. He said that he had a hard time just combing his hair, brushing his teeth, putting his shoes on. He would let bees sting him and they call it apotherapy in that the bee stings, what, I'm not a doctor, so I can't explain what I don't it know does. how it does it, but if they do. I'm not even gonna, so, but he says, he says, somebody asked him, well, so don't the, don't, doesn't it hurt when you get stung? And he goes, it hurts, it hurts like <laughs> hell, but I can brush my teeth and I can comb my hair now. And so, yes, absolutely. And, I, and there was a report out just about two or three weeks ago that they're actually checking into whether it kills cancer cells. And really? they're having, yes, and they're having some very positive resort, uh, results on that therapy as well. Now, I have a really quick story to tell you about bee stings. The most I think I've ever been stung was 30 plus times and it was my fault. It had rained. I didn't oh. have very much material for my smoker, but I was trying to raise queens and I had to go out on a certain day to flip the box around to do, anyway, I won't go into that part of it, but the point of it was I didn't have very much smoker material for the smoker. So I gathered up what I could under the truck that had been sitting there and got enough dry to get the smoker started. But halfway through the process, my smoker ran out. And there I was out in the field now, there's nothing dry. So I said, well, I could run back up to the house and get some more dry material or <laughs> yeah let's just let's go let's just go, go back up to the house and get so the I, I, <laughs> right and now i'm stacking boxes back up and they're like uh uh what are you doing and there's no smoke and they are stinging me they're covering it now my bee suit was just sticking to my skin because it was wet it had rained and i was not to mention the sweat and Sweating so tracks bees and people don't get that either it, that's it so they were covering me up oh, now yeah. bless her heart my wife <laughs> had heard a story on the news about someone that had died from bee stings. Now- You can if you have too many. Well, these turned out to be Africanized bees. And he was out on his tractor and ran over a brush pile that he didn't oh. know that they were in there. And he did his best to get back home. He ended up passing away. 
a neighbor tried to come over and help. His neighbor ended up in the hospital. So anyway, that's the story. Now, you know, we could go into Africanized bees, but that's another story. That's a whole other podcast. That's a whole other podcast. Um, the point of the story was that my poor wife thought I was being attacked and covered up by she didn't know if they were Africanized bees or just what was going on. And but she didn't want to come out because I'm covered in bees and I'm getting the water hose and I'm washing them off and I'm running through the woods and brushing them off of me. Hey, I'm not allergic. It actually, I don't know, there was actually kind of a euphoric feeling. Now, your husband was stung seven times or was it seven? Mm -hmm. And I was stung over 30 because she after I had my shower, she broke out the Benadryl and she's, I'm counting the squirts and it was over 30. I stopped counting, mm -hmm. but I actually felt pretty good after that. Um, but it's kind of just a, a funny story in that you meet, need to make sure your spouse knows what's going on when you're out there. And if you're out there and you have doubt, don't go get the, go get it. And always use plenty of smoke. Well, we've only got a few minutes left. Um, okay. So actually we're a little bit over time. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you online? My uh, email address is D C Hainline, which is D C H A N E. L-I-N-E, -E, and it's at AOL.com. Okay, perfect. Well, Chris, thank you for coming on today. Again, like I said, uh, bees are my passion. Um, is there anything you want to add that's really short? I just think that it's a, what we've talked about today is going to bring the awareness up for folks to, uh, you know, I understand it's costly sometimes, but if these bees get in your house, please try to call a beekeeper first and at least get a price and compare it to and you're right a lot of beekeepers will work with you on getting those bees out of your house as most economically as possible and that's just what i have fallen so much in love with just to you know do my part for the environment and for these lovely creatures they are absolutely amazing and the other thing is if you are going to be spraying poison uh please at least contact the apiaries that are registered. I know we're registered. Contact them and let them know so they can net their bees because you are unknowingly actually harming a lot of bees. We literally lost nine hives. A friend of ours, as I mentioned before, our, our uh, mentor lost 60 out of 80 hives. That's A, sometimes a lot you of can, money. <laughs> sometimes you can check with the ag agent mm -hmm. of your county and they may have a list of the beekeepers, beekeepers in the area so that if you you would know if you if had you're neighbors in texas or... contact the texas association of beekeepers because they're registered yes. here as well yes uh, there's lots of places you can check and it, it, it just costs you a little bit of your time but you're saving that beekeeper beekeeper a lot of stress a lot of money a lot of honey because all of that honey was unusable because it came in with poison in it so we couldn't right. we couldn't recycle it That's a lot right. of times if a hive died dies we can recycle the frames and put them in to help another hive boost it up and we couldn't do that either we had to completely start over and it was absolutely but thank you again like i said for coming on today chris you were a joy to talk to and again i really appreciate you coming on because bees is a passion of mine as well um for those interested you can contact chris hanlon at d c h a n e l i n e at aol.com and he'll respond um, thank you guys for listening to The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their heart. I'm CJ Peterson of cjpetersonwrites.com. Until next time.